Hello friends, welcome to AI Vlogs. So today we're gonna to talk about something a little bit different, which is how robotics has been quietly gaining a ton of momentum and capability with AI. Everyone's seen the latest Tesla bot trying to compete with Boston Dynamics, but I think more of the real interesting research going on here that has to do with a lot of this progress is how you actually show a robot uh, what it needs to do and then have it just do its thing repeating itself over and over again. So right now, this is a problem with uh, production in factories or assembling things in uh, production lines or even just cooking food or making Chipotle. Chipotle has already created a robot that can partially replace most of the line cooks. The idea here is that, so in a similar way to how that Minecraft model we showed earlier, uh, which used GPT-4 to actually play Minecraft, looked at a task, decided how it wanted to do it, and then broke down the problem into actually actionable tasks. Similar things are happening but in combination with machine vision and a few other factors that make this all work. So what I want to cover today is from a paper called GenSim, Generating Robotic Simulation Tasks via Large Language Models. And the key here is parallelizing these as much as possible. So limiting kind of how much input you really need, and then having kind of the model just tell a robot how to do it with machine vision. And you'll notice here that all of this is simulated. There are plenty of other projects that have actually done this with real robots. But from our self-driving video we recently published, you, you should know that generally speaking, simulating environments like this, similar to Minecraft, is actually a really curious and fast way to train these models. And if you've worked in robotics labs before or worked with SCADA arms, like these huge arms that assemble cars and things, you'll know that programming them is actually really, really difficult. And the way it's done in most cases is actually having engineers come in and just tell them, you know, like either manually show them how to move or actually just manually generate tool paths and then have them rigidly repeat those over and over again. Ironically, there was actually a company at MIT in 2018 that suggested, you know, why don't we just have kind of a more gentle robot that'll have a human, you know, direct their arms and show them what to do and then optimize those tool paths. And that was actually a huge speed up and seen as a massive advancement at the time. But now we actually have AI. So let's see what they've actually been working on. So for now, most of this is actually just looking at moving blocks and specific objects to specific locations. So this robot, I think, has at least six degrees of freedom. So there's a lot going on here. And it looks like they've actually translated some of this into real life, but they've used most of the training um, time to do and actually kind of this virtual space. So Jensen uses LLMs to generate vast amounts of simulated robotic tasks that ideally will help eventually with using LLMs to actually create um, generalized ways of training robots to do all sorts of things. So right now it's just picking up cubes and you know doing some rather basic things, but there are some other examples here of sorting by color or sorting by shape, uh, putting shapes into a bowl, all things that seem kind of generic and pretty simple for humans, but for robots and machine vision models, this is kind of interesting. And what's cool and I think lesser known as well is that a lot of this work has been done at Meta and curiously was repurposed information and just general like work from metaverse stuff. So it's cool to see relatively useless metaverse stuff actually turn into something very widely applicable and useful. So uh, their abstract is kind of long, but I'll read a little bit of it here. Basically they say collecting large amounts of real world interaction data to train general robotic policies is often prohibitively expensive, thus motivating the use of simulation data, which they actually used. However, existing methods of data generation have generally focused on scene level diversity or object instances and poses rather than task level diversity. And this is something that a lot of these Minecraft models have done that use LLMs to actually break down tasks due to the human effort required to come up with and verify novel tasks. And this is a common problem in existing AI as well, right? Like you have to have humans classify things or at least to use to, or at least to, use to until we had kind of novel ways to do this with um, generative AI. Uh, this has made it challenging for policies trained on simulation data to, to demonstrate significant task level generalization or just being useful for other things than their initial task they were trained on. So basically in this paper, we propose to automatically generate rich simulation environments and expect demonstrations by exploiting a large language models grounding and coding ability. Uh, so they're using both of these. Grounding, they just mean understanding tasks and kind of uh, input and output uh, abilities. Our approach dubbed GenSim has two modes, goal direction generation, goal directed generation wherein a target task is given to the LLM and the LLM proposes a task curriculum to solve the target task and an exploratory generation wherein the LLM bootstraps from previous tasks so it learns from what it's done before and iteratively proposes novel tasks that would be helpful in solving more complex tasks. 
they use GPT-4, which is cool because that's exactly what was used as well uh, in that Minecraft model we covered uh, to expand existing benchmarks by 10 times over 100 tasks on which we conduct supervised fine tuning and evaluate several LLMs, including fine-tuned GPTs, CodeLama on code generation for robotic simulation tasks as well. Uh, so you can also you can fine-tune models for things like this in robotics, not just um, fine-tuning to get better waifus out of stable diffusion. Furthermore, we observe that LLMs generated simulation programs can enhance task level generalization significantly when used for multitask policy training. We further find that minimal sim to real adaptation the multitasking policies pre-trained on GPT-4 generated simulation tasks exhibit stronger transfer to unseen long horizon tasks in the real world and outperform baselines by 25%. So basically they mean the baseline here is just starting from scratch um, for the given tasks. And these are pretty cool. So they show what you can do with GPT-4. They show with some things with Llama as well. Um, and they have, again, as they said, 100 different tasks to select from, and um, the speed seems pretty reasonable. Curiously, there are way more for GPT-4 than for Code Llama, but let me see if I can find a uh, code cylinder in zone, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, well, there's so many, I'm not gonna scroll through 100 of them, but we can look at a few more here. So they show their distillation process. Again, this is pretty similar to some other uh, iterative models we've seen. They do provide some pseudocode in the archive paper, which I've linked below, which if you're a researcher or someone doing CS stuff, um, you should definitely check out. And what's really cool is they actually went all the way and uh, went to actually using these models in real robots as well. So they took their simulated uh, robot arm and then basically because it has the same degrees of freedom, ended up actually being able to use it, which I think is pretty cool. So the other cool thing is they also have a hugging face demo. So you actually have to use a um, GPT-4 key to make this work. And they have one that they claim to not actually need some of this stuff. Um, so this is pretty broken right now, but I'll still link it below if you want to try it out. Uh, it's really cool to see basic models like this also running on GPT-4 and Llama, so not just GPT-4. Uh, if you have a GPT-4 API key, I think running each of these inference runs only costs about 10 cents, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's even cheaper for a GPT-3.5. And, uh, you know, so definitely try this out. Uh, I need to get this out today, so you guys can try this out in your own time. But, uh, yeah, please like and subscribe if you like our content. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video.